In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about five money tips that you should follow or avoid in your 20s if you wanna secure your financial future. Now, I started making a lot of money in my early 20s, and since then I've done a few good things that have allowed me to be in a pretty good position, but I've also made a lot of mistakes and I could probably be a lot further ahead if I knew these five tips. Now, luckily I'm in a decent position right now. I own about 40% equity in my house, uh, I have a pretty low mortgage payment, which is pretty good, and I'm locked in for five years. Uh, I have a stock portfolio, which is closing in on six figures, and I have a business with over six figures on the balance sheet. So things are going pretty good for a 26-year-old. So whether or not you're making a ton of money right now, you're doing an online business, maybe you know, you've know you got lucky very young and you're making a lot of money, I'm sure that's some of you guys watching, or you may just be working a random job, these tips will apply to you. These tips are scalable no matter what level you're at, and they're just good financial principles. Let's get into the five tips. Number one is living below your means. That's probably the most important personal finance tip that matters. If you simply follow that rule, live below your means, you'll probably never really have too much financial trouble. If you've always got some buffer of cash for emergencies, you live below your means, you're not spending more than you make, you'll probably not have very many problems. And this is where most people go wrong. I see so many people spending on credit cards, using those buy now, pay later programs, which are insane, and they end up in debt. Avoid debt like the plague in your 20s, especially when it comes to stuff like clothes and cars. That is what's going to kind of hinder you and set you back. If you're earning, no matter what you're earning, I started earning about 1,200 pound a month in my first job. And even then when I was earning that, I was still putting away 200 to 300 pound per month every single month into an index fund to start my investing. When you start investing, that is your ticket to getting out of that life. Every month that you set aside money, is you getting closer and closer to that goal of either being able to take a risk and start your own business, maybe buying that house, or if you save hard enough and you like follow the fire movement or something like that, you can potentially retire really, really early and just live a modest life off passive income from your investments. As you grow and scale your income, you wanna keep investing more and more off that money over time. This is essentially what allowed me to purchase this house. That's how I got my house deposit, was just saving every single month from whether I was making, you know, not very much at my job, but even when I started making money through my businesses, I still put away money every single month and got into the habit of doing that really, really early. So if you do that and you're, you're 19, you're 20, and you start doing that, you're going to have a really good habit built up that allows you to keep doing it. It just happens automatically every single month, no matter how much money you make, whether you're working at McDonald's or you're doing really well, you just put some money away each month. That is contributing and you want to avoid touching that money at all costs. And that is just contributing to your future life of not having to work a job or do whatever it is you want to do. One of the easiest ways to get there quickly is simply living at home. This is something I probably, looking back, would have done longer. I think I lived at home until I was probably 21 and then I started renting a house and then I purchased this house a year later. But looking back, I probably just would have stayed at home much longer because it's just such free money. You can go out there and just save that money, live with your parents if they allow you. Obviously some people are not in them circumstances, that's completely fine. But if you can, live at home. There's one exception to this, and I think that's probably university. And you know, if you wanna go and you're doing university, probably go and live at university. I think that's worth it probably for the experiences. I don't know why I didn't go to university, um, but I think a lot of people have a lot of fun there, and that's maybe worthwhile doing. And I don't think that you should avoid all of good experiences in life. You're only gonna be young once and have them experiences, so you should probably cherish them while you can. So stuff like that, go for it. But if you're simply just moving out because you're like stubborn and want to look like you're independent to your parents, stay at home for as long as you can, save that money, and then put yourself in a better position in a couple of years down the line. Next up is tip number two, and it kind of follows along from this living below your means. If you're living below your means, you're gonna have excess cash every single month, no matter what job you make. You should be investing that money. That is how you get ahead. If you invest your money and you have a solid return over time, you're going to make a lot of money in the long run. Now the problem is, and I made this mistake massively, is just thinking you're a better investor than you are. In my head, I knew companies that were gonna blow up or whatever, I didn't. Nobody knows, no one's as good. Most hedge funds can't beat an index fund. So why do you think some guy in your 20s, how are you gonna beat these hedge funds that have so much money to invest in research and they still can't beat it? Avoid going after like quick money. I've seen it so many times and especially recently with this 
uh, the crypto crash. I had people and friends that I knew who made hundreds of thousands who now pretty much are back where they started three years ago. If you make quick gains, take them quick gains, buy a house, put it in index funds. But just try, avoid that at all costs. I actually did okay with this. I mostly invested in index funds uh, for my you know, first kind of three or four years investing. I invested in index funds. I saved up about 30 or 40 grand to buy this house and I cashed out. That was simply index funds. Now this time you know, around, coming into the kind of massive bull run we had after COVID, I did kind of start to get into buying random stocks that I didn't really know what they were or what they did, but I'd seen some YouTuber or whatever say, I'll buy this stock. And I see my friends doing the same. They were buying random stuff and getting like three X returns in a couple of weeks or a couple of days sometimes, which is insanity. But obviously that doesn't last for the long term. Luckily, most of my money I kept it in index funds. I did lose probably a few thousand just on random stocks that I picked because I thought I knew what I was doing. I didn't and ended up losing money on them. So just stick to index funds. You're probably not gonna beat any of these expert hedge funds and investors. Put your money in an index fund every month, forget about it, don't even look at it, just automatically set up a direct debit, have that money coming out and leave it there. Just leave it there for years. You shouldn't have to touch this money unless you're buying a house or doing something, You know, maybe starting a business that's maybe worthwhile, but go ahead, save that money in there. And when you are you know, living below your means, keeping that excess cash, go ahead and invest it. That's how you get wealthy. Keeping your money in cash most of the time is just kind of crazy. It's getting eaten away at with inflation. Right now, it's a little harder because obviously inflation's high, but the market, I think it's gonna drop a lot further. But again, I don't know. I still have money in the stock market, but I'm holding more cash than I normally would because I think there's gonna be big drops. That could be a mistake because inflation is so high. My cash is just getting eaten away at every single day, but it is what it is. But just invest in index funds, forget about it and move forward. Tip number three is avoid these at all costs. That is designer clothes, cars, Stuff like Sky Sports and all that. I see people who are earning, you know, fifteen hundred pound a month, and they pay one hundred and fifty pound to Sky Sports, BT Sports, and all of this rubbish. Like, you ever heard of an Amazon Fire Stick? If you know what I mean, go use that. Don't spend one hundred and fifty pound a month. That is eighteen hundred pound a year on sports. That's insanity if you're earning fifteen hundred pound a month. Avoid them at all costs. Designer clothes absolutely crazy like if why are you wearing designer clothes in your 20s when you're making like so many people i see again making 1500 two grand a month and you're wearing balenciaga you've got gucci shoes that is absolutely insane it's just stupidity nobody cares what you're wearing either like it doesn't matter you can wear like i'm not mr stylist i'm terrible with style but you can go ahead and buy nice clothes that just don't have a designer brand on them and look good. There's plenty of people who are really you know, well-dressed, look good, but they don't spend a lot of money on clothes. You don't need to, nobody cares. If you're buying, I've seen people like say, I'm gonna buy this just because I need to get an Instagram photo in it. Absolutely ridiculous. Same with cars, like people buying cars and paying three, 400 pound a month for you know, a, a payment when you're making you know, 1,500 to three grand a month it's kind of madness like that's not a good investment of your money especially in your 20s and this is a huge mistake that i made myself i've had ridiculous amounts of cars i've had two r8s and not ett uh i now drive like an s3 and you know the, the two r8s completely unnecessary i was making good money at the time went ahead and, and bought them or i didn't buy them but they were on pcp agreements it's actually insane like i, I don't know now it's probably a little more expensive to get cars but you can get a, like an R8 for like a 10 grand deposit. And I think I was paying like a thousand pounds per month, which all in all, not insane. It's probably now much higher with the interest rates, but like it's insanity. I, that is kind of not necessarily a regret because I loved the cars. They were great. I loved having them. But the problem is now, like I'm in my twenties, there's not really anywhere else to go, right? Like. I bought an S3, but it doesn't give me the same satisfaction as getting in you know, a, a supercar, right? Driving that. And now I can't get the fulfillment from that. So what I would say is like, just in your 20s, nobody gives a shit what car you're driving. Nobody gives a shit what car you're driving at any age anyway. So just in your 20s, when it's completely acceptable to be completely broke, just drive a piece of shit car. That's as simple as it gets. There's no need to spend any money on cars. And especially if it's like putting you in debt and like making you struggle to make your payments every month, don't have any money left over to save, it's absolute insanity. If you do start like making good money, 
you're probably gonna do this. Like I was making good money, I could afford the car, it was completely fine, but it's probably not worth it. I would say just stack your money, invest it. Like again, I love the cars and going back, I'm glad to have had that experience. It's not an experience that most people can have is driving a supercar at 20 years old, but probably could have made better financial decisions there and just invested that money. And it probably would have grew nicely over the past kind of five years instead of being in a car. One of the biggest things is like when you start getting these nicer and nicer things. So when I had the nice car, I definitely had like an ego thing of letting that go. And I think this is where a lot of people get caught up. So I talked so I talked briefly about when you're living below your means, keep the things you buy scalable, right? So whenever I had the car, I didn't want to sell it because I was afraid of what people would think, right? Like people start talking about you, whatever. But the truth is I went from driving an Audi R8 2016 RDR8 like looked amazing to driving a 2009 Honda Civic and nobody gives a shit. Nobody cares. I did it just during, during lockdown. Obviously, I was paying a thousand pound a month. We weren't even allowed out of the house. So I was like, I'm just going to sell this. I sold it. Like, I think it was actually just right before it was when COVID-19 was getting bad. I sold the car because I knew I wasn't going to be driving for at least three months or whatever. It ended up being a year and a half. We weren't allowed out of the house. So it was a reasonably good decision. But like, I was like, what are people going to think? And in your head, you think, but nobody cares at all about it. It was kind of a good thing for me to do because when I did that, it just showed me that, that no one cares. And this fear I had of like losing everything and what are people going to think? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. And again, that's given me a different perspective moving forward. Now it allows me to take more risk and I don't really give a shit anymore what people think. I'll just do whatever I want. But before I was definitely kind of concerned about like looks and, and like what, you know, car do you drive? What are you wearing? Whatever. People are just thinking about their own lives, what they're doing. They don't care about you. Like they don't care about what you're doing. So avoid cars at all costs. It's, it's, a, it's just a money sink at this age, unless you're making like a ton of money. You know, if you're, if you're making 50, hundred grand a month and you want to buy a nice car and treat yourself, go for it. You know, it, it's not that big of a deal at that point. But again, if you do start making less money, then you might have to get rid of it. And the problem is, it's not that I'm getting rid of it, it's the fact that nothing else kind of pleases you until you go again. Because as humans, you always want more. And once you've experienced something, you need that next level up. It's like, you know, drinking alcohol for the first time, taking drugs, you want more and more. You want that next hit. And it's the same with money. Money is just, you know, another dopamine hit in your head and you just want more, the next thing, the next level. So if you give yourself them really high levels at a young age, it's hard to go ahead and get them again and get them hits of dopamine without doing crazier and crazier things. Now, if you can just keep scaling up massively, that's completely fine and keep going for it. But it just becomes harder and harder to get that next level. For your first five and 10 years in business, I'd say just go ahead and keep them little treats for further down the line. I went from driving a Vauxhall Corsa, I bought an Audi TT and then a couple of months later was driving an Audi R8 and then I got a bigger Audi R8, uh, like a newer one. And there's not really like anything in between that now is just not that fun. Like it's not that exciting to go after or, you know, get. So it's like, what's the next thing? I would probably, you know, just go in increments. Like the RDTT was probably enough. I should have just drove it for three or four years and then got something a little bit bigger instead of going from zero to a hundred real quick. Tip number four is derive happiness outside of money. There's a couple of reasons why this is a good thing. It allows you to be much more aggressive in your business and tech much more obviously hopefully calculated risks but a lot of people in the money game they kind of get like attached to the money and that becomes their personality and that can become a problem because you know if you lose your money or things go wrong and it's going to take a couple of years to rebuild you kind of feel shit but i have a lot of comfort in knowing that it doesn't matter if i lose everything i like some of the best experiences in my life are completely free obviously having money is so much easier to live your life, especially in these hard times. But if, you know, if I went completely broke tomorrow, I had to go back living with my parents, running a marathon is like one of the best experience I've ever had. And that is completely free. I can do that every single day. I can go out and run and feel good doing that. And that makes me happy. Going to concerts with my girlfriend, that is one thing that also makes me really, really happy. And I love doing that. That is, you know, again, work at McDonald's, I can do that. I can go to the gym every single day for free. That is also something that you know, drives a lot of happiness, which is outside of money. Obviously having cars, having nice things, going on like expensive holidays is really, really fun, but it ultimately doesn't really matter. And you're gonna be no happier 
with a hundred thousand pound car than you are with a three thousand pound car it doesn't make any difference if you can do that then it allows you in your business to be so much more aggressive and especially if you don't have these liabilities as well like cars and stuff you can be so much more aggressive in your business my like monthly expenses i can get them down to under a thousand pounds so no matter what i know i can go and get a, a, an entry level job anywhere and still maintain my lifestyle now that is through a couple of good decisions i made like buying this house and putting a good deposit down which means my mortgage is really low i can sell my car out of no car payment and all i've got is like electric bills and food bills so they're the only expenses i've got so under a thousand pound i can probably live pretty happily and still have money to like go out on the weekends and party and stuff like that. A lot of people also spend a lot of money on like partying and they think this is more like an American thing because in the UK you can go out for a weekend and spend a hundred pound and get absolutely wrecked and not have this whole bottle service table thing. I think that's the craziest thing in the world is spending $10,000 on a table. I don't get it at all. You're fucked up. You're probably not even gonna remember the night anyway. Why does it matter if you spent 10,000 on a table? I don't get that it's just a whole status thing that's ultimately bullshit if you want to have fun just go to, to a concert go dance on the dance floor last but not least is making sure that you make the right big decisions in your life it's not the small decisions that are going to matter it's not the you know buying a coffee at starbucks every morning that's going to change your financial life it's not going ahead and spending 100 pound on the weekend or 100 dollars going partying with friends it's not going to make a difference in your life the big decisions is where it counts. It's the buying a car. And I've found myself falling into this trap so many times. Like I'll penny pinch and like try and save money on small things. But when it comes to buying a hundred thousand pound car, because the numbers are bigger and you're like trying to negotiate the price of the car, but you obviously want the car and you're trying to negotiate and it's like three grand or whatever they're looking and you just say, right, fuck it, I'll take it. And you just, you, you know, you just, that three grand, it's just gone in a second like that and you don't care about that and it seems like a little amount of money but it's massive and then you'll go try and save money by not buying a starbucks and i find me doing this and it, it's so stupid like focus on them big decisions like buying a car the interest rate you're getting on if you have a car payment uh same with the mortgage like what interest rate are you paying you know are you buying the right house don't buy a house that's you know above your means i'm very very happy of with the house that I purchased it you know it's a it's a four bedroom house and I could live here my whole life happily but this I could have went way bigger and probably just lucky that just the way finances work in the UK and getting a mortgage uh at the time I bought my house I only had a couple of years books so I could only really get a mortgage off you know 150 grand or something like that so I I really couldn't spend four or five hundred thousand on a house even though I could probably afford the mortgage payment buying a house like that it ties you in and it really ruins like it, it can put you in a bad position because one there's going to be a lot more maintenance in that type of house you've got a thousand twelve hundred maybe thirteen hundred pound mortgage payment you have to make that could cause a lot of stress for me the number one thing is doing what i want when i want just being able to go play golf at 11 o'clock on a, a tuesday morning and have no one tell me that i can't that's the biggest thing for me i would sell everything no cars no house go live with my parents if i can work you know on my own terms the thing that derives the most happiness for me is simply being able to go on the computer over here and just work on a random thing if i want to like learn how to code or i want to go ahead and just like build a blog and just explore stuff that excites me i want to be able to do that every single day and i'll make less money but have the option to do that rather than having to go like i would not take you know a million pounds per year working a job that i absolutely hated and it, you know really really despised over 100 grand a year just doing whatever i want where i want when i want i think some of the biggest things is location freedom time freedom and obviously having enough money just to be able to do what you want and i've heard a lot of people talking about this recently but like having three grand a month but being able to work when you want on what you want from where you want that is worth so much more than earning 50 grand a month like that is if you're earning 50 grand a month but not on your own terms i'd rather the three grand a month doing whatever i wanted and that's simply it hopefully you guys enjoyed this video let me know what you think down below if you have any money tips for people in their 20s go ahead and let me know down there if you did enjoy the video go ahead hit that subscribe button hit the like button and i'll see you guys in the next video